Hey Sainers and welcome to Saints TV. New Year's Day is a few days away and that means the end of this decade and I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to look at the top 10 players of St Kilda since 2010. So for the last decade, who were the 10 best Sainters in that time? Uh, I think we can narrow, you know, we can pick a few already. Obviously, you know, I've written the list, so I'll go through that a bit later. But, you know, you've got Nick Rewalt, Montagna, uh, Jack Stevens, Seb Ross. You've got a few players there. It's pretty much a lot of the best and fairest winners, but we'll go through. Maybe there'll be a few surprises. And if you disagree with me, feel free to comment below and let me know what I got wrong or what you, who you think deserves to be in the top 10 players of the last 10 years of the St Kilda Football Club. Let's get into it. So at number 10, this might come as, as a bit of a surprise, but I think, you know, in his, you know, 2015, 16 seasons in particular, he was right up there as one of the best mids for us. Probably our best mid, inside mid, accumulated the ball. In 2015, he averaged 28 disposals and he polled 12 Brownlow votes. So, um, you know, just as a, a player for the competition, he was doing really well to poll 12 times. Um, and that was David Armitage. So David Armitage, I think at number 10, people forget that his early form uh, before injuries and before we had you know other youngsters come through and take those positions from him, he was actually a very, very serviceable midfielder. Uh, pick nine in 2006, I think he was. So uh, David Armitage at number 10. Number nine, Jaron Geary, our captain. Obviously um, didn't really get much game time in say 20, 2009, 10, 11, uh, but he really kind of came to the fore around 2016. He played on Eddie Betts and kept him quiet and we won by a lot and obviously becoming captain's no small feat for any football club. And you know, particularly when you've got someone like Nick Rewalt, who's um, been that known figure for so long for Jaron Geary to come in and do a really good job of that. Since then has been exceptional and we noticed that, you know, when he was missing last year in his injuries, um, which was unfortunate. We did miss him in the back line, and he does control and organise a lot of the team. So I think that's a big thing, um, and it's a really good trait to have in a captain. Um, and Jaron Geary at number nine. Number eight, Seb Ross. So Seb Ross is a player that has a lot of mixed feelings in the supporter base. Some people think that he's, yeah, um, he's a great player, um, and one of our best mids. Some people think that we can replace him and his disposal suspect, but you know you can't question his consistency um, for the last at least four or five years, particularly when you've got players like Del Sano leaving, Goddard leaving, Hayes retiring, um, Jack Stephen now gone. The responsibility is lifted on Seb Ross, and you have to say that he's lifted with that because you know he's averaging around 27 possessions per game in the last five years and that's as high as anyone in our team um he's won a number of best a couple of best and fairests and in 2017 he did poll uh, 14 brownlow votes while av av averaging five clearances per game so he was right up there as one of the best mids in the game um and he's got plenty to offer and i think this year he's gonna go to the next level especially with other mids picking up you know the disposals and taking opponents away from him he won't have that that you know overdoing responsibility of I need to carry the whole team you know so I think he's going to really lift for that so he comes in at number eight number seven Jack Stephen can't remember how many best and fairest he's won four or five but you know at his best he was our best midfielder of the last five or six years for sure and it's a big loss that we've lost him to Geelong but you can't deny that you know when people look at St Kilda and they think geez do they have any A graders it was always Jack Stephen, you know, that kind of, um, I think Jack Stephen might be an A grader. He was the one that everyone was like, he's the closest out of any St Kilda player on the list to be an A grader. So I think that Jack Stephen being a number seven is, is a good position for him to be. Maybe some people will have him higher, let me know. Uh, but I think there's a few players ahead of him, uh, which I'll round out now. Um, and you'll understand why he's at seven, but feel free to let me know if you think he should be a bit higher. But Jack Stephen in my list is at number seven. Number six... Now, he did a lot of his early work, you know, from 04 to 09, but I think people forget the, uh, the consistency that this bloke had in goal kicking from 2010, particularly when Rewalt went down with his hamstring and he just went to the next level. And that's Stephen Milne. So Stephen Milne is my number six. Uh, he kicked, you know, he played over 275 games. He kicked a lot of goals. Um, in 2010, he kicked 57 goals, which is still the most 
a St Kilda forward has kicked in a season this decade, believe it or not. Um, so that's an interesting stat to have. He kicked 197 goals during the 2010s despite retiring in 2013. So you can see that in those three years, he was on form. That's averaging over 50 goals a season um, in, that, in those three or four years there, which is exceptional. Now at number five, questionable, but people can't deny how good he was, say from you know, 2008 to 2012. Um, he was he was one of our best players, one of our most important players. A swing man, could play anywhere, played forward, played back, played wing. That's Brendan Goddard. And I think his flexibility has put him at, at number five. I think that the fact that he can play everywhere and he can do any position well is huge and not many players have that skill set. Um, I think maybe a Josh Battle is the closest one we have at the moment, but even then he hasn't done it for nearly as long as Brendan Goddard did, and we know 2010 Grand Final, the mark, you know, 09, he was exceptional, 2011, 12, he was right up there as one of the best players um, in the league, one of the best utilities in the league, and um, that's why he's number five. Number four, Nick Del Sano. He left at 2013 for North Melbourne, at the end of 2013, uh, but you can't deny that in the years before that, he was averaging over 25 possessions per game. In 2011, he polled 28 Brownlow votes, something that people forget. He polled 28 Brownlow votes and finished second in the Trevor Barker Award for Club Best and Fairest that year as well. Um, and he was also awarded All-Australian in 2011. So that's why Nick Del Sano for me is number four. Number three, it is Lee Montagna. So two-time All-Australian. He had arguably his best season in 2010 where he averaged 28 possessions per game, close to five inside 50s a game. I still remember a game where he played Adelaide and I think he had 43 possessions and kicked five goals, which is ridiculous. In 2016, we moved him, people would remember, to halfback to prolong his career and that worked well. Um, he was exceptional in that position. And across his entire career, Montagna polled 106 Brownlow votes, which was very impressive and 287 games. And I still remember the two long bombs he kicked against Richmond in 2017. He was still doing it as late as 2017. So exceptional player. I'm very lucky to see him play live. Lee Montagna is our number three. Number two, Lenny. Lenny's number two, the absolute warrior of the St Kilda Football Club. And although he was exceptional from 04 to, to 10, I think that 2010, you know, obviously, Norm Smith medalist, absolute champion of the club. He was exceptionally good from 2010 to 2014. I mean, he was averaging close to 10 tackles a game in 2010 across his career. I think he averaged over eight or nine tackles a game, which is amazing for an entire career. What can you, you can't you can't say anything bad about Lenny. Lenny embodied exactly what we wanted as St Kilda to be. You know, tough passionate, never gives up, classy, a fighter, a warrior. You know, he did everything. He, he put his heart on the sleeve. He fought for the badge um, and he did that every week. And that's why we loved him. And that's why he's my number two. And you guys know who number one is now, Nick Rewalt. Now the AFL posted a, I think a top 50 for the decade and Rewalt was at number 24 or something like that. And a lot of people disagreed. And some people didn't because they argued that, you know, Rewalt from 04, 05 to 2010 was, that was his peak. But we're talking about best saints of the decade. And I don't think anyone comes, no one beats Nick Rewalt. Nick Rewalt by far is the best player we've had in the last 10 years. And I'm hoping now moving into 2020 and beyond, in the next 10 years, we're going to be talking about the Jack Billings, the Rowan Marshalls, the Hunter Clarks. I want that to be what we talk about in 10 years time. And I want to be talking about bloody flags too. That would be nice. But from 2010 to now, Nick Rewalt by far the best saint that I've seen live. The best saint that a lot of, you know, outside supporters would say they've seen live. The thing with Nick, I guess, was that everyone was amazed of his durability and, um, his consistency, and, and it didn't matter how old he was, he was kicking bags like he did against Brisbane. I think that was 2017 or 20, yeah, around 2016, 2017. He kicked nine against Brisbane, and he was still taking 17 20 to 18 marks a game, you know. And that's just amazing for someone that was 32 or 31, however old he was. Um, but 2010, he was exceptional. 2011, you know, exceptional. 12, 13, leading goal scorer a number of times. Nick, definitely number one. So 
That is my top 10 of the decade, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what your or who would be in your top 10 of the decade. I assume most players would, that I've mentioned would be in your top 10, maybe in a different order. Maybe some people think that Lenny should be number one or Jack Steven even, you know. It depends on, on your angle of things, but that's my... Um, my top 10 of the decade. Comment below, let me know. I'd love to hear your top 10. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll be posting videos in 2020 and beyond, so stay tuned for those. Uh, but in the meantime, enjoy the next few days and have a happy new year and go Saints.